If you haven't done so yet, please pause the video and try to solve the question on your own before listening on. What we want to do first is actually redraw the picture in a way that shows all of the angles that are important to this problem. So we want any light ray that's bouncing off of the diamond to be obscured or blocked by the raft. That way anyone outside the pool looking in would not actually be able to see the diamond because all of the light that's bouncing off of it would be, again, blocked by the raft, so you couldn't actually see it. Now, it's important to note that at the juncture between the water and the air right here, we're going to need what is known as a critical angle. And at the critical angle, what happens is the light ray strikes the boundary between the water and the air, and rather than refracting out into the air, it actually will travel along the surface of the water. And in fact, anything larger than the critical angle will cause the light to be reflected back into the water. So again, this angle right here has to be the critical angle, otherwise light would actually refract out into the air and somebody could possibly see the diamond. Now, we know that there's a nice formula for calculating the critical angle. And it's often written as the inverse sine of N2 over N1. We have to understand that light begins in the water, and so this material would be referred to as 1, and then it's attempting to refract out into the air, and therefore that would be material 2. So when we say N2, we actually need the index of refraction for air, and when we say N1, we need the index of refraction for water. Both of those values could be looked up in the table of this chapter. So we're going to go ahead and plug in the values. Now, when we calculate that, and make sure your calculator is in radian mode, we get approximately 48.6 degrees. So that's going to serve as this angle that we've marked in the figure, the so-called critical angle. Now, if this is 48.6 degrees, then through a little bit of geometry knowledge, this angle here also would be 48.6 degrees. And what we want to do is actually draw a nice right triangle in this fashion right here. We were told that this length here that we've marked H was two meters. That's simply the depth of the pool. So we know that. Now what we really want to calculate is this distance right here, what we've labeled as R, and that represents the radius of the raft. We can see that the radius of the raft is opposite our angle, and the two meters is adjacent to that angle. So opposite and adjacent involve the tangent function. And the angle at play here is that theta of 48.6 degrees. The opposite side again is marked as r, and then the adjacent side is 2 meters. So we'll multiply both sides of this equation by 2, and that will allow us to solve for the radius, which turns out to be roughly 2.27, but just be careful, we don't want the radius of the raft, we want the diameter. So all we need to do is double the radius to get the diameter. And we get approximately 4.54 meters, so this would be the correct diameter of the raft. Thanks for watching. If you liked it, please click the thumbs up icon and subscribe. Remember, you can send your own question in and I'll do my best to answer it on YouTube.